Hey there, Todd Mariano of Deep Grooves Mastering. I'm going to demonstrate uh, my progress so far with feedback. So here you can see I've got essentially a cutout from my cutter head, uh, part that holds the transducers. So very similar to this part. Just took that piece and I made it standalone. And I'm actually quite happy that I did because it pointed out a problem uh, in my current cutter head. So I've been on version 1.b. I've been making a lot of tweaks to the transducer system as well as the torque tube and the linkage to the torque tube. And uh, I shrunk my transducer cards down quite a lot so that uh, where the stylus would fall would be in line with the center pin on the platter and when I shrunk my card down womp womp I forgot to move my magnet stack <clears throat> so my older cutter head uh, the prior printed version which had the star insets on the sides uh, its magnets were not aligned properly with the transducers which meant that I was losing a lot of power and I was also losing high frequencies. So this head that I hold in my hand is 1.C and it is sounding so much better. And I wouldn't have readily discovered that because it was a sort of detail I glazed over until I started working with the feedback and I slid in a, a transducer card with no transducer in it and I realized, whoa, <laughs> magnets were off. So back to this. Uh, you know, I have made my system ready for feedback since day one. So down in there, uh, there's an extra set of pins. My cards, my transducer cards, have always been made with an extra set of uh, slots there for pins that have, you know, were for, for future use, for feedback. So even up to and including the, the cutter head body itself, um, there are extra female sockets, uh, you know, reciprocals inside of that connective part in the back of the card. So uh, my cutter head is ready to go, which also means that any dynamic version could easily be upgraded to a feedback version. So if somebody bought a dynamic version, I could actually upgrade their head to the feedback by just adding a different wiring harness in the back and uh, changing out their transducer cards to ones that have feedback. So this is my feedback transducer and uh, you know it's not a whole lot different than my dynamic transducer you can see I'm, I'm doing some shielding here uh, beneath that shielding is uh, a coil I'm not going to go into details about it at all okay and uh, how big it is and all of that suffice it to say this cover has no magnet in the top. There is a magnet in the bottom, which is part of the drive system. Okay, and obviously there's a magnet down here, but there's no magnet near the coil that's down in there on, on my uh, uh, bobbin piston. Okay, so if I put this guy in, uh, first of all, let me, let me show you what these are connected to. So this cabling has two pairs in it. One pair is for drive, the other pair is for feedback. Uh, the pair for feedback are actually connected to this voltmeter. The voltmeter is on milliamps and we are on AC. Okay, right now it's going nutty because it's not actually connected to anything. Uh, it's connected wiring wise, but the card, the transducer card's not in yet. So when I put this in, that'll go to zero. So back here, you can see on my amp, uh, I've got electrical connection for the drive, right? And then for the feedback, here are my two probes, right? So when I plug in this card, which of course, you know, I have a pain in the ass doing.
you'll see the meter will go to zero. Okay, so that means it's you know now electrically connected, and since there's nothing going on, there's no reading. So what we're going to do is give it some 1K. A little bit of 1K tone here. And uh, I've got the volume about where I know that I'm going to get 0.1. And so that's 0.1 simply from alternating magnetic field induction. So that is from induction from electromagnetic field that is alternating that is being created by the drive coil and I think I can do better to shield it but for right now that's where we're at okay so if I pull this guy out by the way that's as that's as hard as it's gonna be for people to repair their cutter head okay you just you just saw half of what you have to do. Of course, there's linkage to the torque tube, but that has been made very easy to remove. In fact, I have made a handy tool to remove the cap that holds the uh, linkage from here to the torque tube. So what I'm gonna do is take off this cover, which has no magnetics in it, and of course, I'm not gonna show you guys this part because, you know, I can show you the inside of my transducer. You're going to have to buy one if you want to see that. Okay. I've now put on <clears throat> a cover that has a magnet in it. Okay, and you can actually see the magnet in there. All right? And of course, you know, the meter's going wild again. So once we slide this in, it will read zero. Well, sorry, it'll read zero if you actually have no audio going, okay? <clears throat> but if I put it back up to where it was before, right? My little uh, tape mark right there. You know. You can see I'm getting now 0.4. So that is a 4 to 1 ratio. I think that tweaking a few of the elements and how I am making this feedback transducer uh, will get me to the 9 to 1 ratio that's required to actually utilize feedback effectively in a negative feedback system. You can actually see though that this value ramps up real quick. So it's sort of logarithmic. It's not an even scale. I get up to 0.8 and I'm, I've barely turned it very much. So you can see I am getting feedback and not so bad. And it's not affecting the sound quality at all. So that is the uh, feedback transducer. We will be implementing, you know, a little bit of changes once uh, I get moved, and I don't think it's going to take me that long to finish. So this is tremendous progress. Todd Mariana, Deep Cruise Mastering, Project Blade Runner, Feedback Transducer.